ready for a great question and answer session here at Monster Bash. We are always so, so happy to have this woman here. Scott Gettle is going to be your moderator. And right now, Martine Beswick at Monster Bash. Obviously, 
sort of passed in the night, really. Um, and immediately we started. In fact, we quite get, because both of us hadn't done, well, she'd been working, but I had literally come out of retirement for this. And I'd been in retirement for like 25 years. And so when we did it, I mean, first of all, I was thinking, oh God, I'm going to be, I don't know if I can do this. Oh, yeah. However, because Caroline was doing it and everybody else, we got down. And we, and when we did it, we just, we got all sort of like, <laughs> we were terribly excited, terribly excited. So, and actually working with my darling sister, I mean, what? Really? Yeah. Okay, gentlemen, next, yes, sir. Uh, okay, just got to say the Bond movies. I, again, really love them. But I, I just got to say, when I talk to people about one of my favorite fight scenes, it's always the gypsy girl fight from, uh, from Russia with Love. And any story you have to tell about that, I think I'd love to hear. Well, first of all, it actually, we rehearsed for three, three weeks. Um, and then, uh, when the, we were supposed to go to Turkey, which I was very excited about, because, you know, one of the things, actually, one of the things that would happen at that point uh, in the 60s, when you were an actress, I mean, one of the things, the first things you asked was, where, where was the film going? <laughs> what country are you going to? <laughs> Not what the script is about and what it's going to do for your career. Where are you going? <laughs> and so one of the things I love is the fact that we go to Turkey and oh, how exciting. Well, it didn't quite turn out at all. And we were all ready to go and suddenly, no. And we did it on the back lot of Pinewood. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> However, it was really, it was, they did a really, it, the whole production was fantastic and it did have a really good feel to it, really good, I mean, and uh, because it was a night shoot and because we had this rehearsal, we had the three weeks of rehearsal, it was, they wanted to do, Terence Young wanted to do handheld cameras so they could kind of really go in and move in. And so it was kind of an exciting fight. It was a really exciting, and I have to say, I mean, it was probably sort of at that time pretty amazing, these two women just going at it like that, you know. Um, she was not my favorite, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to go into it. <laughs> she just wasn't my favorite. <laughs> Yeah, acting bug to bug to keep working with my husband. <laughs> I, I don't make, you know, the thing about it is that I don't really want to come. I, I, be, I was in retirement and I came out for him and really I had such a good time and it was, he's just such a love. I don't want to go and mess with anybody else. I mean, this is, I want to be familiar. I want to be in my family. So, um, if you call, call that the bug acting again, it's really about the fun I had. <laughs> <laughs> right, more questions up in the back. Hi, Martine. Hi. Uh, where did you film One Million Years to be seen? Any recollections of Ray Harry? How is it you could share? Oh. oh. Um, we did that in Lanzarote in the Canary Islands. And um, I. I don't remember when it was, in fact it's interesting because the next year is going to be, the, they're doing a hundred, hundred year, um, uh, what do you call it, centenary or something very special and they've got a whole, there's a whole um, exhibition of all his work that's going to be happening in Scotland. So it's a big year for Ray Harryhausen and anyway, so Basically, I had to remember uh, his daughter asked me to sort of make, you know, write something about my memories of him. And the thing that I remember most of all was when we first, the first um, scene that we had to do, and there we were, you know, there's like hair and there's all of us, and we're in this like beautiful volcanic lake, and we're all, you know, swimming or supposed to be in these bits of leather that are now hanging off us. <laughs> Really, you know, wet and soaked and 
not attractive. And then they have to find this pterodactyl. <coughs> and raise on a flatbed truck with a special stick to give us the eye line so that he can fill in and make these creatures, right? So he's got this stick and we're all going around going, <laughs> and there's nothing there. And so every now and again, we kind of, we suddenly turn and see all these, these us twigs, really, you know, little wet, soaked pieces of leather going, <laughs> and we'd start laughing. You know? <laughs> I mean, we'd have to, they'd have to stop. And then the director would say, now, the guys, I mean, please, because this is, we have to get on with this. Oh, so we go again, and suddenly we get this whole sort of giggle, and we can't stop. So this is what, but it did work. Finally, of course, we stopped laughing. But it was, I got to see him working a little bit after that. Wow! I just wanted to sit at his feet, and I wanted him to tell me stories. I wanted his. I, I just wanted. He was a lovely guy. Lovely guy. I mean, the whole experience of that was really fantastic. So, yeah. The gentleman in the white hat, yes, back here. Yes. Um, how was it working for Roy Ward Baker on uh, Dr. Jack Wilson's time? Um, well, we got on very well at first, and then there was a, a there was a, a little problem because he decided. I think he was being pushed actually. And a little problem decided that he was going to be. He needed a full. He needed full nudity. And it wasn't in the script. I said, no, 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 don't be silly. Um, and he was kind of, he got a bit sort of, you know, nose out of joint. And the two of us were sort of a bit at loggerhead because I said, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. But then after a while, I thought, this is so silly. This is so silly. So then we got on. And we had, we actually really had a really good time, especially because I was having a great time with with um, rap Bates. Excuse me. Um, so it was just that we, had, we did have a little glitch, but not for long. Okay? <laughs> he was a brilliant director. He did he, some work here in the 50s with 3D. Yeah. And he made a movie with uh, Barbara Shelley, the Quaker Mass movie. Ah, about that, yes. Really cool. Thank you. Okay. Okay. More questions? Uh, yes. Martina, I have an interesting uh, question for you. A film that a lot of people don't bring up. You worked for a young director named Oliver Stone. <laughs> you did a film called Seizure, I believe, with, I believe, uh, Jonathan Fred, who's famous for playing part of his films. Yeah. In Dark Shells. How was it to work for director Oliver Stone at such a young age before he became a big name and to work with Jonathan Fred? Okay, well, first of all, um, I, was in, I was living in Rome at the time, and I didn't know. In fact, my agent called and said, where are you? Somebody's looking for you. And Oliver had seen Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde and he insisted that he wanted me for his film. So anyway, after a long sort of like to do, to do back and forth, I sort of flew in and to LA and then I was going to fly up to Canada to meet him. And when I read the script, I thought, first of all, it was really, it was, it was kind of dark and it brought up some sort of weird things. There were some weird things happening, some really strange things. I, mean, I, I can't even go into it because there were so many little things that were happening. I thought, oh, I don't know about this. But anyway, we ended up together. And I definitely felt that he, there was definite genius. I had a sense that this was a, a genius coming. And the cast, was amazing, amazing. And the whole idea of it, and of course the thing is, unfortunately, it was originally called Queen of Evil. Now, I wasn't happy about the change, but I couldn't do anything about it. The Queen of Evil, moi. <laughs> <laughs> and instead of seizure, which was Jonathan, because I killed Jonathan Fred, and give him a heart attack, I wish we kept the title. However, working with, he was, he's very intense, Oliver Stone, very intense, but he, he created a, an intensity and, and a sort of a magic and 
haunted. The house was like haunted as well. So there was a, it was a, a oh, and we shot, we lived in this house and all the rooms were the sets. So you wake up literally with cameras and bits and stuff and lights and everything in your room and we had to kind of like walk around it. Particularly Jonathan Frid. <laughs> and he had the main room and the main room was used a lot. So there was a lot of equipment in there. So he'd wake up and say, I didn't I, I didn't sign on for this. You know, and, then, and he'd grump and we'd laugh and tease him. <laughs> So it was, it was, it was an amazing, interesting uh, shoot. It was incredible, incredible, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Hi. What movie were you doing that you were glad it was over when it was over? <laughs> 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 Interesting question because I'm trying to think which movie. Well, I suppose really there was a little movie that I did with Jeff Burr. I did a couple with him, and I think the last one was called Night of the Scarecrow. Well, I was a victim. I've never been a victim before. I had my face all sewn up. I mean, I was not happy about that. So I think that's probably not the kind of film that I wanted to be in. So I suppose that's the one. Night of the Scarecrow. Thank you. What was your reaction when you were asked to be in the second Bond film? How did that come about and how was it working with Sean Connery? Okay, well, the re first of all, the producers absolutely said, you are not, I did not, they did not want Bond girls to come in twice. Right. I mean, it was, that was it. But Terence Young, who um, had met me, and in fact cast me, in fact, before I even did Rush on Love, he said, go get some, because I'd gone up for Dr. No, and he said, go get some experience. He said, oh, you're too young. I've got something for you. And I went, oh, okay. Um, and it's interesting because, I mean, at that point, I trusted that, and I didn't have to, because, I mean, you know, director says, oh, I'm gonna use you, and you go, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. you know. Anyway, he did, and then I met him socially, and we became great friends, and then when Thunderbolt came up, there was part of an island girl, and they said, the producer said, no, 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 we're not having Martin, basically, right? they're too ridiculous, and Terrence said, don't be ridiculous, she's an island girl, you've got to have her, and so he pressed and pushed, and it was Terrence that got me there. I loved him. Oh God, he was so fabulous. He was the most elegant gentleman ever. And mischievous. <laughs> Very mischievous. He was Mr. Mischief. He was always sort of like going, giving a brain, you know. <laughs> he was great. It was great. It was great. We have time for one more question. Is there a part you ever wanted very badly and did not get? Yeah. <laughs> a few of those. Uh, the part that I really wanted was um, the part that I wanted to play Morgana in Excalibur. Uh, I actually was... <sighs> but it was, you know, Helen Mirren, she did a fantastic job. Really fantastic. But I, that's, I really wanted that. And the other one I wanted was... Um, the Dalmatian thing with Ben Close. David. David has a second surprise for Martine. He's coming up here. David Colton, of course, uh, with the classic horror boards on the internet. Oh 
Hi, uh, I also do the Rondo Awards. Uh, how many oh. folks here voted this year? Uh, that's great. Um, Martine mentions that she likes to work with family, and I think we'd all agree that of her many families, this is one. Yeah. And, um, I'll be a recurring figure tonight, but um, we wanted to present Martine with your induction into the Monster Kid Hall of Fame. <laughs>